there. I'm so glad that you stopped by my channel. I'm Amy and welcome to my kitchen at Little Spoon Farm. Today we are going to start off with the basics and I'm going to bring you an updated tutorial on how to make a sourdough starter. This is a very easy process that only takes about five minutes a day and if you uh, have enough patience you'll be baking sourdough bread in about seven days. So what do you need in order to make a sourdough starter? Well, it's pretty simple. All you need is flour, you need water. Those are the only two ingredients that we're gonna use. You need a baker's scale or a kitchen scale. You will need two uh, glass jars. And I like to use like a stiff spatula to stir the starter. You also need something to cover that jar with and a rubber band. If you don't have um, these mason jars and you're using a cup, just simply take a piece of fabric to be able to cover that up. So, how do you get this going? Let's get started. On day one, you'll mix 50 grams of whole wheat flour and 50 grams of all-purpose flour with 100 grams of water. Stir it until it's well combined and cover it for 24 hours. On day two, all you need to do is give that mixture a good stir, cover it back up, and set it again on the counter for 24 hours. Day three is when you'll start feeding your starter once a day. Add 50 grams of the starter to a new glass jar and discard the rest. We'll talk about what you can do with the discarded starter later. To that starter, add 100 grams of all-purpose flour and 100 grams of water. Stir and cover for 24 hours. Continue the same process once a day until you reach day seven. So one of the things you really wanna keep in mind when cultivating a new sourdough starter is the temperature of your kitchen. If it is cold, this process is gonna take longer, probably about uh, 10 to 14 days versus seven. So if your temperature is below 70 degrees in your kitchen, I do have a little trick for you. Uh, it's very easy. Um, I have one of these little refrigerator freezer thermometers that keeps track of what the temperature is in my kitchen. If it's too cold, all you need to do is take this starter and if you have one of these, you can put it right alongside in your oven. Do not turn the oven on, only turn the oven light on. Close the door and the heat from the light will keep the inside of that oven at about 75, 80 degrees and that is the perfect temperature for your starter to grow. So if you've had problems in the past with growing a starter, I can almost guarantee you that temperature is the culprit. So now that you have your sourdough starter ready to bake with, you need to decide if you're going to bake, uh, how often you're gonna bake. So if you like to bake often, then you will feed the starter every day and you'll just leave it on your counter and you'll feed it once a day at the same time every single day. If you bake every so often, you simply feed your starter, let it rise for a couple of hours, and then stick it in your refrigerator. Take it out a day or two before you wanna bake, start feeding it, and it should activate and get it nice and ready to bake with. The amount you want to feed, regardless of daily or weekly feedings, is 25 grams of starter, 100 grams of water, and 100 grams of flour. This is gonna keep the yeast and bacteria in a nice healthy balance, and keep your starter healthy and ready to go whenever you want to bake something. So throughout the seven day process, your starter is going to act differently every day. At first you might see a few bubbles and then by a day four or so, it may look like there's no activity at all. That's perfectly normal. So just keep going with the feeding schedule and by about day five or six, you should start seeing lots of activity and you should see the starter rising and falling. It's a good idea to put a rubber band when you feed it in the morning or at night, whichever you choose, where the, um, the level is when you first feed it and that way you can see if it's rising and falling. The best indication that this is ready to bake with is that it is rising and falling for a few days in a row. So if that's the case on day seven, then you can go ahead and try to bake a loaf of bread. If it doesn't work right, just keep giving it daily feedings and you should be just fine. So another question I have is how to actually save starter. So this is a jar of some of my starter that I've saved and you'll see it's these flakes of dried starter. 
And how you do that is instead of discarding your sourdough starter after you've fed your starter, uh, you can take that and spread it out very thinly on a piece of parchment paper that's on a baking sheet, set it aside and let that dry for a good four days. You want it to be completely dry. Once it is, you just break it apart and you stick it into a very airtight jar in these little pieces and put it in your pantry. I do that about once every six months. I'll, I'll do a new batch of dried starter. That way, if I have an emergency where you know, I lose my starter for some reason, a fly could get in it, or the jar could break, or you just never know. I can go ahead and rehydrate this by taking some of this out, adding some water, letting it rehydrate, and then putting some more flour to feed it with some more water, and then just do that for a couple of days with the, the regular feedings. And it should only take a few days for this to you know, become active and be able to use it versus having to start all over again and wait a whole week to bake. So this is one of the ways you can use your starter uh, discard. Also, you can use your discard for other recipes like pancakes and waffles. Uh, you can put it in a compost. You can give it to a friend. Maybe you have a friend that wants to bake sourdough or, you know, you just simply throw it away. So those are kind of your options of what you can do with sourdough discard. And if you have any other ways to use it, go ahead and leave a comment below so that, you know, we have some other ideas. So last but not least, go ahead and give your starter a name because this is going to be like a pet to you. You're going to have to take care of it and feed it and, you know, interact with it a lot. So this is Hound Dog. He's been going strong for a few years now and he always bakes such delicious sourdough goodies for me and I cannot be happier having started my journey with sourdough and I hope that this tutorial helps you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below and I will leave a link in the box to our new website with the written tutorial with a, a recipe printout and all that good stuff. So if you like the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more sourdough recipes. Until next time, bye!